here. This isn't the cross Jesus died on. It is a representative to us of the place where Jesus gave himself for you. You can come and touch that cross and, and you can be glued to it. You can be stuck there and say, I am unworthy. That's what Paul was saying. Don't, don't be thinking you're so worthy. Be thinking of yourself unworthy. Examine yourself. Open yourself up to God. And after you've done that, take communion. It's just okay. You know, I realize that some people, and we get here all the time, my wife and I feel like we get so busy. Maybe it is that the cares of life have just slowly choked your spiritual life down. Maybe you just need to come and say, Lord, thank you for who you are, for everything he's done for you. Don't take him for granted another day. Don't take him for granted another day. Tell God of your commitment. Write him a sentence. Bring that to the cross and the pastors will put it up on the other cross. Man, I want you to realize today that it's real. I want you to think about what God is doing today. I'm not going to wait a tremendously long period of time because... I mean, we, I said we could be here for days. I realize that. I, we could be here literally. We could, we could just be here for a while. But I, I want to tell you today that for the last six weeks, every Tuesday morning, we have come to this church and we have sought God's face for lost people. And I believe that today in this place, I believe that today in this place, there are people who are here, maybe you didn't even plan to come today. Maybe you woke up, or maybe this week something was said, and you thought, you know, I need to go to church. I really need to be in church. My final point today is God wants to be your God. I told you in the book of 1 Corinthians, he wrote that to the church. He did not write that to the outside world. He wrote that to the inside world, and he said, guys, we're playing games in here. We're, we're up in here having church, and we're not, we're not worshiping God. We're thinking about us. He said, he said you come to, and because you realize they weren't having this for communion, they, they were eating a meal together. And he said, you're coming to eat. You're not coming to think about what I did. You're just coming to eat. Eat at home. Don't make a mockery of what we're doing here. We're going to go back to the Old Testament, the book of Jeremiah. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel. That's a big portion of the Old Testament. Jeremiah 31. For I have... Yeah, I, I'm reading the wrong verse. Wow. Can you put up verse 25? I don't know. This, this is New King James. It's probably not going to be that in every one. I just looked down at the wrong verse and got blessed. Look at this. Verse 25 of 31. They love it when I do this. They don't have that ready already. Look at that. For I have satiated the weary soul, and have replenished every sorrowful soul. Do you, do you know the word satiated? Do you know that word? That's a good word. That, that means, it, it really, it, we, would, we would put the word satisfied. That's what we would put there. But satiated actually means to saturate. That's what that really means. It, it really literally means I have saturated the thirsty with moisture. That's literally what that means, satiated. Isn't that good? Do you know that I believe this morning? Now, now we're going to go back to 33, Jim. Thank you for tolerating me there, or whatever the verse is I have. Yeah, 33 and 34. Can I tell you this morning that I believe there are people sitting in this room today who are dry? You can barely swallow right now. The, 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 your tongue sticks to the roof of your mouth. You, ha you can't lick your lips because you're so dry and you need to be washed that's a moisture word 
you're empty and you need to be filled, God wants to be your God today. Jeremiah 31, 33 this time. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. That's what God wants. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they will know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. Wow. Can I tell you this morning? I believe there is someone here who is dry. And I believe there is someone here this morning who probably says, Pastor, if you knew what I had done, you wouldn't offer me salvation. You wouldn't offer me communion. If if you knew the things I've done, you wouldn't want me sitting in this church. Can I tell you what the Bible says? It's in the book of Romans. It says, Where sin doth abound... Grace does much more abound. I paint this picture. If your sin is five feet deep, God will dig eight feet over and come up to you and lift you up. You down in a hole today? You feel like the world's caving in? Maybe some of these other things I've said apply to you. Maybe you've got what you believe is some hidden sin. I'm telling you what, if Sherry can come down here, you, you have no excuse. If that woman can come up to this altar, you have no excuse, by the way. So if you're saying, well, my hip kind of hurts today, be ashamed of yourself. Sorry, Sherry, I'm not picking on you, girl, but man. Years with a broken leg in a wheelchair, God heals her and she says, ooh, I'm going to get to the altar today. <laughs> I hadn't been able to do this for a while. And we're sitting here going, well, this is kind of slow today. Not much hooping and hollering in church today. It's kind of dark. I could take a nap. (sighs) Hmm. If you leave this place in the same sin that you brought into this place, you leave here lost today. You're not close. You're lost. If you say, you know, pastor, you get notes like this once in a while. Sunday morning, I almost came to the altar. Almost is lost. If God is speaking to your heart, and the answer is anything other than, yes, Lord, I hear you, then you're lost today. And I want to invite you, if today you're sitting in this place, you have been prayed for for six weeks Every week, God, would you bring a harvest of souls if you're lost today and you need Jesus? See, I believe that the reason we did the service this way was on purpose by God, not by me. What God wanted lost people today, maybe there's only one. Could you imagine if we'd had a service and the entire service led up to an invitation and there was one person in this room who was lost? you realize how hard it would be for that one person to go to the altar? And I believe that's the reason God said, we've got some other work we need to do. What I want to do is show to the lost people they're not the only ones who need to go to the altar from time to time. The whole church ought to realize that we're going to make trips down here intermittently and re-enter the covenant. So if you're lost today, I'm not asking you to do something unusual. I'm not asking you to do something... It is difficult. I know it's difficult, but I'm asking you to do something essentially important. I'm asking you this morning to stand up, walk down here, write on one of these pieces of paper, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. You don't have to write those words, but you write something to God that tells him that today you made a choice. In fact, I tell